got this parcel on eBay. It was an interesting box, quite an old box. You can tell by the uh, packaging in here. This has not been done recently. It's even got a drawstring to remove it. What I've got in here is a very old television cathode ray tube. This old cathode ray tube dates from probably about the 1960s, I think. Um, quite a small screen for that time, but uh, the neck is a much thicker neck than you would get on a, a later CRT. Uh, it does have a electrostatic focusing, which came in about then. This is built by Ferranti, which I actually didn't know made television tubes. Okay, before I start, just a quick history of electron guns for uh, television uh, uh, CRTs. The top one's one of the earliest ones uh, commercially used for black and white televisions pre-1960. Uh, these tend to be referred to as having an ion trap, which is a slight bend in the anode, so that the heavier ions would hit the casing of the anode rather than the phosphor of the screen where they would damage the phosphor. They also used large magnets to focus, which were replaced around the neck of the tube, uh, somewhere around about here. And this is a style of magnets they used to use for that. This one here is from the 60s and that ties much closer to the one when the, the CRT I've got here. This one has this anode which is for focusing uh, which electrostatically. So this is really just the history of black and white CRTs. I uh, have a bit more about the evolution of electron guns for televisions on my website and I'll put a link underneath. Yeah, I thought it was fitting to build up this circuit for driving this CRT using an old line output transformer. Uh, this one would have been for a black and white television, although slightly newer, it has a stick diode here uh, for the EHT, which goes onto the anode cap. But uh, I've also put the potential dividers to give me the focus on the anode voltages here, so, and an oscillator built in there. I uh, also found one of the old style CRT sockets. Uh, and we can run this on 12 volts. It's quite difficult to get a coil to fit that style of uh, CRT neck nowadays, but this one does. Uh, uh, and you can see the two coils it, it, for the frame and, uh, and the, the line scans built in here. Okay, well, first of all I'll put the uh, deflection coil on. I think if I remember rightly that's the way I want it. And that can be clamped down onto the, the neck. This tube doesn't have a, a, an earth outer coating, it doesn't have the aquadag. That's okay. And our high voltage anode connection goes on to here. And the tube base at the top here, which has got the key for the position. And that is basically that connect it. I'm using the amplifier to drive both uh, coils, the field and uh, line. The, the module I'm using has been salvaged out of the projector television the other week. Uh, these are quite nice modules. They have two amplifiers and there are very few components to, to get them to work. They're also DC, so I can actually put DC levels into it. So we're going to use one of these. The, the only snag is we need a plus and minus rail. So I'm, for that, I'm using uh, a larger, larger power supply with uh, a plus and minus 15 volts. Okay, as you see, we've got the high voltage. We've got a dot on the screen here, and I've applied uh, a sine wave into one of the amplifiers. So we now have a a vertical deflection shown on the screen here, and that is a. Uh, I can move that coil, and you can see the position of that will rotate with the coil, so I can get it more or less vertical. And I can show you that on the scope, that is the same signal being fed into the amplifier of the. CRT at the coil at the moment. Uh, I wanted another amplifier, another oscillator rather, so I built this little, this is available on eBay, it's quite a neat little circuit. Uh, it gives you a sine, a triangle, a square wave output uh, from, and it's literally only 
uh, pennies. It's not an expensive item at all. Um, the only thing is the sine wave's not brilliant, but we'll have we look at it and uh, see what we can do. So I've now got uh, two sine waves going into either amplifier. Uh, and we're getting a, a residue figure of roughly a circle and as I was saying you'll see it's not a perfect circle and if you look at the, uh, the scope you'll see the lower trace is what's coming out of the little cheap kind of oscillator and it's a kind of slightly triangulated waveform there yeah, a bit brighter to see it which got me thinking what about two triangular waves so if I change to triangular waveform and that is quite good actually you get quite a nice triangular waveform and that would suggest we could do something with one of these slopes I can't get a sawtooth but if scanning on a CRT requires a sawtooth but if I blanked one side out that would be rather interesting now I've changed the frequency for the so we've got this uh, a triangular wave scanning and the amplitude is with a sine wave and you can kind of see there's a two duplicated sine waves one on top where it scans one way and then scans the other way on top of it. The little oscillator I'm using to produce the uh, triangular wave shown here also has a square wave output. I can use the square wave signal to create a blanking si signal to remove part of this waveform so I have only a sweep in one direction. Now you can see with uh, beam blanking we're just looking at one trace in one direction and we can reproduce the sine wave we have on the other amplifier. Because our amplifiers will handle DC I can put in an offset, DC offset on the, on the beam and also on a change the amplitude as well. Another interesting test is to put a square wave input in. The fact that it can reproduce a square wave is quite neat. And I can adjust the frequency. So effectively we've got a little oscilloscope with deflection yokes from a television set. Okay, just finally, just to look at the circuit diagram I'm using. Uh, I've got the cathode ray tube here. Uh, this is the pin base for it. Uh, we have the high voltage supply for the anode, the final anode here. This is derived from the line output transformer. I haven't got into the details of the oscillator circuit here but it's running from a 12 volt supply. Uh, we have the voltages for the heaters supplied from here and also potential dividers. Um, the beam blanking is fed through this transistor which we basically pull this grid to a lower voltage than the cathode sits at uh, thereby blanking the beam.